uh, replace Bicentennial Park seawall. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $1 million for the purpose of replacing the seawall at Bicentennial Park? Such sum to be raised by the issuance of municipal bond. Do we need to go through that whole part? It's all the same as the one just It's all the same. Ditto on the, uh, on the last one. So that part. <laughs> Three fifths vote required. Three fifths that vote required. Fi final estimates will be done after the uh, engineer's estimates of bidding. So, we want to make a motion and then we'll second for discussion. I think, I think the director said that the, the figure he currently has is closer to $2 million. And I do want to just say that they are diligently putting that together. We had a meeting with them. The Friday before Thanksgiving, uh, when we all circulated uh, the information that we sent to you, uh, they presented us some options. You know that we need to review with the board. Obviously, all options have cost uh, associated with them, but that is uh, the the approximate value uh, to repair slash replace the wall. And what is the importance of the replacing the wall? Uh, basically, the investigation that we did in this past year. Um, per the Warren article last year that allowed us to look into uh, the actual concrete material itself, um, how the wall is embedded into the earth and what's actually happening uh, currently with the wall. The, the results have come back, um, you know, not good. Uh, the concrete wall is composed of uh, two layers, if you want to call it, the original wall and then a wall that was built over it uh, when the Coast Guard was there. Uh, the inner wall is showing um, signs it's the concrete's been tested uh, to have the silica reaction which means it's expanding which means it's it's crumbling um, although the outer surface doesn't have it um, that's great but if the inner part is falling out um, the outer parts gonna have nothing to uh, attach to uh, the wall is not uh, embedded as one would have hoped imagined liked uh, in some cases it's not even embedded two feet underneath uh, the lower level of the wall uh, so what level of importance have you attached to it? I mean, I read the uh, report. We are here, and, and this is important. Uh, I'd say on our list it just went to high. It, it's similar to the, the question before, what will happen with the state? Will, so you could put the same probability question to this wall. Will this wall fail or will it, will it will stay together? Um, if we have a mild winter like we had last year, status quo, we will, we will not lose the wall, it won't fall in. If we have a major nor'east storm with a lot of a wave action pounding the, the wall, could it uh, undermine it and um, allow more water in or a lot of flooding and erosion? Yes, it could. What Jed, Jen was alluding to when we say it's not pinned is Remember the rest of the seawall when the state put it in, say in the 60s or 70s, they drove the metal sheet piling in all the way down the ledge. And then, of course, a cap got put on that, concrete cap. And then later, that whole thing got entombed with what we more see now. Uh, so, in other words, that the rest of the state's seawall is actually tied to the sheet piling that went all the way down to the ledge. Ours literally sits on sand. So one of the worst things that could happen for it is a lot of overtopping. Uh, that would create turbulence on the backside, erode that sand, and literally undermine the wall from the backside. That's its real weakest point, and it'll actually fail get by put, getting pushed in. So they've recommended, our engineers have recommended us, we look at putting in more stone than we normally do and that we'd be prepared to put in more store stone if we see a bigger storm on the horizon. And that's where we're moving in that direction, talking to contractors, obtaining costs. Um, so, yes, this is one of those hard decisions that, and I didn't have a price when I, we put our list together. Uh, what do you choose? Do you choose a seawall? Do you choose a, you know, it is, it is a very, very tough choice. When you, when you talk about options and you talk about putting more stones or more boulders down there and stuff, would that be a temporary solution? Yes. Part of it, will, and, and actually a, a solution to the future, because 
if you look at the aerial photos now, you can see that we don't have half of the uh, of what I revetment, call the revetment the stone. right stone out in front of our our wall to diffuse any of the wave action. Right. So one of the options that we're looking at, and we discussed the previous Friday with our engineers, was that we actually go ahead and look at probably acquiring some of this stone now and literally laying it on the other side of the stone wall. <clears throat> Could it be? Would it be reused later when we rebuild it? Definitely. It isn't like it's going to. But we're talking stones. If you put the three of your desks together, that would be a small stone. Right, we're talking about what's down there on, on the, 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 the state wall. Exactly. Right, right. The, these stones take flatbeds to move. Yep. Um, you know, you, you need something with a hand that can lift them well, one by one. Crane, the trucks mm -hmm. take, you know, get damaged, you know, loading them. So there's select contractors and select uh, people who actually even have the stone uh, available. Are, are we talking about, I mean, the possibility that, that wall could collapse? It would just like settle in place because yes. the, the soil around it would be eroded and then it would allow in a lot of possibly you know during a storm a lot of ocean water what would be that effect it would leave a lot of sand on route one in, in that area we have to remember that in the early 1700s in the history of this town that uh, there was a northeaster freshet uh, that came through this very area <clears throat> and eroded the entire area all the way down and filled up what is now Meadow Pond. Now, the ocean resealed that, uh, so the town didn't have to do anything back in those colonial days to do that. The ocean sealed itself up. But there's a lot of houses down there now. There's a lot of condominiums down there now, and all that water is going to have to go down where they are, right. which is a little bit more than they were planning on for the drainage system that they have. So. Mr. Chairman, may I? Sure. I'm reading from the 21 December 2016 uh, inter-office memo. It's to the town manager. Um, it's from Jennifer Hale. She's the deputy. Page one, it says that the New Hampshire Department of Transportation outfall out pipe is broken, which is causing further yeah. erosion on the beach. I would request that we make liaison with NHDOT, ask for uh, their, uh, then would like that in writing. Have. In, in how much they're going to uh, subsidize our effort on this if it in fact is uh, causing damage. Uh, we'll go into the deep pockets of the state on that one. Um, continuing on, it says there's swelling and deterioration of the wall structural stability. A poured uh, half million yards of concrete both underground, under the ocean, and at uh, the nuclear power plant. That is an ominous, ominous statement. The wall is not sitting on or connected to bedrock, another ominous, ominous statement. The bedrock was found to be 10 feet to 16 feet below the sand. Based on the investigation results and wave alternative scenarios, the existing seawall has a marginal factor of safety and stability. I remind you that people uh, bring their children down there. I remind you that people have their children sitting on the wall. I'll further extrapolate my comments uh, that we should be shutting that down and posting that. I've discussed that already. We're going to fence it this week. May I please continue? Thank okay. you. Uh, this is a huge, uh, Esquire has talked about effluent and liability issues. Uh, this goes south, and uh, I am less sagacious than to be able to predict which way that wall would fall and if there would be loss of human life if it did occur. Um, it could bankrupt the town. And that doesn't speak to the tragedy of this, this ominous threat sitting there as it does. There's a potential that in extreme wave conditions, there could be failure. And again, people go down there, and it is a natural driver for people to go down around the ocean. Young people, um, old runners like Jim, um, hey. a bunch of people. If you further <laughs> examine the, uh, um, uh, is it Tigbon, Tigbon? Tigbon. Uh, uh, attachment B. It's got Bravo 1, Bravo 2, and Bravo 3 for the uh, post uh, in the, the, the drilling. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And I was down there when they were doing it, kind of fascinated by this, got a couple of minutes. If you go to uh, uh, B1, down to 20 feet, there's nothing here but soft sand. Right. You've studied this. So you've got dozens and dozens and dozens of failing concrete sitting on sand with the Atlantic Ocean pounding it. I'm going to say that again. 
dozens and dozens of times with public access sitting on soft sand. If you go to Bravo 2, at 15 feet on their uh, sample description, at 15 feet says there's no recovery. Does that mean there's? They didn't recover a sample when they went okay. out. Okay. Okay. Uh, again, ominous. There's uh, there's no indication of what that is. But again, you go down that far to 20 feet, loose, dark gray gravel, and slip clay, slip clay. If you go to Bravo 3, the same thing, 5 feet, 10 feet, 15 feet. 15 feet is light gray, silty clay, little gravel, little organics, and fine trace sand. So again, uh, this is ominous. It's a huge liability issue. It's a top priority. Uh, when we speak of these issues about the state, when we speak about legislators in Concord giving away our millions of dollars, uh, it adds up. It is, in fact, infuriating. And uh, when we, we look at these priorities, again, these are life safety issues. Uh, this, uh, to me, right behind, this, this needs to be shut down and posted. If not two weeks, I think immediately it needs to be posted. And then uh, in terms of priorities for a life safety issue, this is it. And for uh, organics to the town, uh, it is the uh, uh, main, main force. So uh, this, I would recommend, be posted on the website is part of uh, uh, our responsibilities, if it has not been already. Um, and the secondary issue is that uh, there's a life safety issue and it rises to the highest level uh, from the command element. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other? I don't have anything further to add. Nothing further to add. Rick? No, I'm all for it. I think it's something that we can see needs to be done. So right. we have a motion. Now, do you want to amend that to the two million as, as they've suggested so far? Or do you want to? The dollar value will change, you know, as they give us the, the final number as we come before you to discuss the options. I understand we do not have a final design or engineering contract on this. So it is really just this preliminary investigation and to get us up. And what was that figure at? What did we say? We, last year's, all oh, the engineering yeah. would probably be 10% upwards. No, what, what is the. What is the what have they given you as preliminary figures now for this? What have they given me for preliminary? I, I haven't seen a preliminary figure. We don't have the ones for the three alternates they've given us. We've put in a placeholder of two point two million. 2. That is not 2. a figure associated with the three alternatives that I will come with because we haven't gotten those yet. Right. Best guess two oh two. Two oh two. So the motion is to two accept million, it. Two oh two. Two two oh two. Two million two hundred thousand. Two million two hundred thousand. All those in favor? Unanimous. May I just